Today we are at the American Quarter Horse Hall of Fame and Museum in Amarillo, Texas. And to tell you the truth, I know nothing about horses. The only thing I know about horses is when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I fell off of one and I've been scared of them ever since. <laughs> but I do get to dress up like a cowboy today. <laughs> Janet knows about horses, so she's going to... You know, you know yeah, more, your yeah. sister has some. Yeah. It's closer than me. All right. We got some cool statues here. Very cool. All right, we're gonna go inside and check this baby out. Well, that's a beautiful statue there. That is a statue of the American Quarter Horse. I, like I said, I really don't know much about horses, so I don't know the difference between a quarter horse and any other type of horse. But Janet's sister raises Arabians. I guess, they're, are they bigger? I don't know. All right, we're going into the Grand Hall. These are all the people that really have shaped the quarter horse type um, community. Yeah, the community, the, the importance of the quarter horse, the history. And this is people, really important people that have been involved the earliest person I see that was uh, inducted is this Mr. J. Ernest Browning in 1982. So that must have been about the time they started the Hall of Fame, I would imagine. Boy, this is an impressive hall, though. My goodness, this place is huge. Okay, here on the ground it says they had the Foundation Bloodlines chart. Wow. You now, when I grew up, we did have a quarter horse when I was first and second grade in uh, Box Canyon, South Dakota, near Ellsworth Air Force Base. We had a horse called Buttons. And then we had a bronc that was named Sally, but Buttons was a very clumsy horse. <laughs> big clumsy horse I remember riding bareback on those two steel dust is what they called the quarter horse when they started out oh really mm -hmm. how do you know that because it's written on the ground no it's just because I, I heard that huh that's a big medallion there that's beautiful now the quarter, American Quarter Horse Foundation is right next door. Now they have all kinds of stuff involving quarter horses. Anything from DNA, DNA testing to programs for events, for programs on showing horses, racing the horses, trail riding the horses, ranch work. They have programs in every aspect for the quarter horse. I didn't know this. A horse has to have a, a, at least a specific weight of jockey on its back. If the jockey is lighter than the weight the horse has to carry, the difference is made up by thin lead weights in a special saddle cloth. Had no idea. I guess that's to make every horse basically Way the same when they start. Yes. Was Seabiscuit a quarter horse? I know he was small. But okay, introduction to the American quarter horse. Okay. okay. Sure. What is a horse? Okay. What is a horse? That, I, at least I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so quarter horses are bred to race a quarter mile. Okay, see, like I said. Here. The first horse to bring attention to the American quarter horse breed in the Southwest was the steel dust. Okay. You're just showing off. <laughs> quarter horses run a variety just like puppies and kitties and, you know, for cats you got Himalayans, you got, you know, the 
the Siamese, you know, whatever, dogs, you have Chinese pugs, you have, you know, shepherds and husky and whatever. Same with horses. The experienced eye theater here, which is basically a quiz that, that they give you. And I answered six questions. I got one of them right. <laughs> so, six out of, I, there's 60 questions and at that rate, I don't think I'm gonna pass, so I'll pass on that. Yeah, they got a tack room here. Here you go. This goes underneath the saddle. Is that where they put the tacks? <laughs> oh, man. These, these bits, there's so many different styles, you know, for horses. And to get the bridle hooked up to it and get a bit into a horse's mouth. Just looks like it would hurt. Yeah, see, like, here's some different ones. This is like a standard use type that, just, in the old days anyway it just seems like that would be painful yeah around their teeth it goes past behind their teeth yeah so it's like so it's like they're choking constantly yeah sponges hmm. cleaning cleaning your saddle up keeping the leather so your your um saddle is considered part of your tack yeah okay had no idea so a horse can Digest up to 86 quarts of food at one time. Wow. Oh my goodness. No wonder my sister spends so much on those horses. Yeah. A human daily water requirement is nine cups of water. A horse is 10 gallons. I always make sure it's secure. You know, I make sure everything's What, well, are you really afraid you're gonna break the horse? Rope it. So is this real horse hair? I guess it is. Yeah. Wow, it feels really thick. Yeah, that's what... Uh, it's like wire. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And uh, this is what they use for bows for string instruments, like for violins. Wow. I guess lineage is very important because you, you, you hear about the value of horses when they sell coming from a, a champion's line. Drop my bracelet. Yeah, she just drops. She's like an old car. She just parts just fall off of her as we're walking around. <laughs> just look at where we're at. There's more to see. We can go upstairs. Yeah, let's go upstairs. Yeah, let's go upstairs. All right, we're going upstairs. Well, this is exciting. We found horse number 105. Early morning disagreement is what this statue's called. Of course, it's not happy. Yeah, he doesn't look happy at all. <laughs> that was a picture of the cowboy right before he got kicked in the teeth by a horse. Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, they're beautiful animals. I, they're, they're incredibly beautiful animals. They're just so big and strong, they're just scary. And if you've ever fallen off of one, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't think I fell off of one. Well, I, I mean, Carolyn, my cousin, was uh, working with her horse, and I went over to their house, and she said, you want to get on? Sure. So she put me on the back of him and started walking me around with the horse, of course. Uh -huh. The horse, of course. <laughs> so... About halfway around this little circular thing, the horse decided it wanted to gallop. I didn't want it to gallop. So the horse took off and I stayed in one place until I landed on my back. And she said, oh, get back on. I said, no way. This kind of reminds me of those scary heads at the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Huh. All kinds of interesting displays. I just don't know anything about them. Okay, this is uh, stuff that uh, B.E. Phillips Jr. wore. He was the president of the American Quarter Horse Association in 1980. You know, I wish I did know more about horses because uh, this is really a cool museum. It's definitely the nicest museum having to do with any type of sports or anything like that that I've seen. I mean, they didn't cut corners on cost. Every display is 
beautiful. No, pretty much the only thing I know about horses is they're big, beautiful, and I try to stay as far away from them as possible. Yeah, you'd think that just being in a contraption like that would scare them. Well, they brought up as, you know, when that's, they're colts and they're around it all the time, of course. That's why we're used to it. That's why they take off so fast when they open the gate. They're scared <laughs> to death of being in there. <laughs> so it might be bad, but it's true. If I was a horse, I wouldn't want to be locked up on one of those has a saddle towel for Refrigerator, who is a famous quarter horse. We saw his statue out in front of the building. Uh-huh. Sad. But you, I, you're not learning anything? I have learned that there was a horse named Refrigerator. <laughs> and he was... Part of the industry. That's not and he was a famous horse, too. So they... use quarter horses to play croquet. Polo? Polo, yeah. That too, okay. that too. Okay. Well, like I said, folks, you are learning as I do. Blondie's dude. It's just amazing. <laughs> Blondie's dude. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> There's a refrigerator. Right there in the middle. Yeah, right there in the middle. Yeah. See all the, the trophies here? He became the richest racehorse in history, earning a record two million one hundred and twenty six thousand three hundred nine dollars from 1990 to 1995. That's a great income for five years. Yeah. They got all kinds of, of awards. I hope he invested it. But you know the bloodline for champion bloodline is so important. Like my sister has her horses. She has one that has a, has a champion bloodline. Well, yeah. you hear of you hear of a lot of champion bloodline horses. What do they call them? Fowls? Is that the the babies? What do they call them? Um, but you hear of those mm -hmm. those baby horses from champion horses. bloodlines selling for one, two, four, five million dollars. But and if the mm -hmm. richest horse ever only made two million dollars, how are they making their money? Selling the offspring of the of the horse that they just purchased? Well, you know, there's it's a lot more money involved these days. So I, I don't, I don't know how it all works. Exactly. Oh, betting, betting. Yeah. Because that's just how much the horse had in winnings, not in how much he actually, how much people made betting off of him. Right, right. It's a beautiful place, guys. It really is. It's definitely worth coming out to see. I just wish I knew more about it. Yeah. I have not seen a person's name that I that I am aware of is, that I yeah. recognize. I'm, st I'm still looking for Mr. Ed. Okay, this is, uh, I do know what this is. This is a horse drawn chuck wagon. Chuck wagon. Is it a chuck wagon? I guess it is a chuck wagon, yeah. I was going to say a carriage, but so I was wrong on that too. You know, for such a nice museum, you'd think they'd put nicer equipment in here instead of this old stuff. <laughs> She's frowning at me. <laughs> if you can believe this, this unit here sold for between $75 and $100 back in the day. That's a Studebaker. Yeah, I'd pay that for it now, even used. Now what makes, what makes a saddle expensive compared to another saddle? Is it comfort or is it the beauty and design? I, I don't know what makes more, I, I guess, the hand craftsmanship, what's put on it, how much, you know, work is put into the mm -hmm. the leather work. Because I can imagine they're and, outrageously expensive. Oh, yeah. It does. I mean, if it was for me, I, I would choose comfort over the beauty just if I was riding a horse all the time. But. So this is from around 1885. Here's 1900. You know, 1890s. You know, and look at that. See, the let they last forever. Yeah, if you take care of them, huh? Yeah. This one's got a few cracks in it, but. What do you expect? But nothing major. 1890s. For, yeah, it looks better than I do, and uh, it's a bit a lot older than me.
Janet and I just watched a 10 minute video on the American Quarter Horse. The and I actually have a better understanding now of uh, why the Quarter Horse means so much to people. The video focused on how the Quarter Horse came to be, how they were bred for sprints, and how people, the, the riders and the horse almost become one together. Um, it's almost like their, their minds meld together and the horse knows what the rider wants, the rider knows what the horse is going to do. And uh, it was moving, it really was. Yeah. Um, I can definitely understand why quarter horses mean so much to people. Yeah. I wouldn't have known that had I not come here. Right. They a lot to do with early history of the West, everywhere, all over. Yeah. Because, of course, they were a working horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they worked the cattle, they plowed the fields. I mean, they pulled the wagons, they pulled the buggies, they did everything. Yeah, they they were, were the transportation before cars. Yeah, during, during the times of the Western movement and the cowboys, the horses uh, were raised and trained to have better agility than the cattle so that they could out maneuver the cattle and make it easier to corral the cattle. This is the gift shop, like Janet just said. And they do have artwork for sale. And books. And salt shakers. These are embroidered. Totally really? different, huh? It's with a yarn, though. Totally different style. That's cool. Yeah. If you come here to buy artwork, bring your credit card. <laughs> Unless you walk around with that kind of cash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of colors, mate. It's sold. Yeah, when I, when I walk around, I have uh, usually have enough cash to fill up my tank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that one's beautiful. That is beautiful. It is beautiful. I love the coloring. Yeah. Uh, the That's eyes. gorgeous. Yeah. It's $4,100. Yeah, okay. I just saw that Donna's asking for donations of like $1,200 for a cat picture on Facebook. Maybe I can like ask for donations <laughs> for, for a picture. No. A, a picture of a cat? But, yeah, was Donna, there something wrong with the cat? No, it was a neat picture. She wanted to buy the, a picture of a cat for $1,200. She wanted somebody to can I borrow. I think it was $1,200 or $1,300. Wow. She wanted somebody to donate some money for a picture. Well, if, if that's the case, uh, there's a nice Lamborghini I'm looking at, folks. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a bunch of these that are sold. I wonder if they're on layaway or why they haven't picked them up. Because <laughs> they haven't been paid for. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yours until you actually give them the cash. <laughs> These are oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Some of them are more expensive than our car. That's done with a pencil. Is it? That's what it says. I need to get better at drawing. It's gorgeous. See, that would be me if I was on that horse. See that, see that guy's face? He's scared to death. He is, look at him. He's screaming for his life. He's like yelling at him to go faster. I'd be yelling, stop. So if you guys like quarter horses or want to know more about quarter horses, this place is awesome. It really is. Um, I wish I had known more about quarter horses before we came here, but I never grew up around horses. The only time I would see horses other than when I'd visit my cousin would be if I went to a rodeo with friends or uh, watched a western movie. So I really didn't know much about them, but this is a beautiful, beautiful facility 
and you can learn all kinds of stuff here. Enjoy, folks. Strange RV tours will take you places With Greg and Janet's smiling faces You might see a crazy flavored soda review Or some tips to fix your RV too So come along, won't you join us, friend As we discover what's around the bend Just sit right back in your easy chair Strange RV Tours is on the air. Strange RV Tours is on.